Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three. Today here with my co-commentator, Nimsh. Hello, welcome. It's, Hello. It's a great pleasure to be here. We have a great upcoming ne uh, next match, Number Guy versus Six. So I'm so excited to be here. We have a lot of fun in the backstage with the guys watching both streams and, you know, just... Having fun. And we already had some crazy games. We have Sixo being, uh, we have seen him play the Shaman with Fell Reavers. So a Mech Shaman with Fell Reavers. Uh, that's a version that is not too popular right now. And a number guy also delivered some great games with the double combo for just six mana. So we are jumping right into the game. Oh man, a Fell Reaver Shaman. Like Sixo is known as a deck builder and he's uh, doing a lot of trend setting and uh, bringing new decks, new ideas, but uh, <laughs> Reaver Shaman sounds uh, crazy. And I'm definitely excited to see what's, what's going to happen here. And there he goes, he brings his Shaman up, so maybe we are about to see some Fell Reavers. Ragnaros is also in here. Number Guy brings his Druid, I think. Yes, we are seeing the cards he has. Innervate Coin and Dr. Boom lining up in his hand together with a Wrath and the Shade of Nexramas. Interesting, like for, for Sixo, I see that this is probably a mixture of uh, mech and uh, a more traditional shaman. Uh, or maybe even more mech, like the Fur Reaver shaman seems... It's to very mech heavy. We have seen it today uh, already. It pl you play it with uh, the mech warpers and he plays Doomhammer in it as well. So it's a very aggressive version and the Fur Reaver is definitely adding some spice to that. Oh yeah, definitely. Also like being bursty, this is one of the values the shaman has. I wonder how he's going to use the totems though, because, you know, the hero power of a Shaman has to be used at some point, uh, but I'm sure he has a plan in mind. Uh. Yeah, Xixo definitely, he has a 3-0 sweep. That was his first game, so it was all working perfectly for him. Number Guy, on the other hand, just won against Forzen, ladies and gentlemen. So Forzen boys a bit, a bit disappointed here, but Number Guy won a 3-1. Well, Forzen is still not out of the tournament, but right now Number Guy, Xixo, whoever wins this match advances. So. Whoever wins this will actually advance out of the group stage. Whoever loses will wait for the winner of Force vs. Alesh after, uh, after this match. That's exactly how it goes. So a very important game here for both players. And I guess we see cards being played, but nothing really happens. I assume this is another spectator bug. Uh, I will just quickly rejoin. Alright, so Number Guy versus Sixo. Sixo is a guy who um, is from Team Archon. Uh, he was uh, previously on Root. And uh, he is one of those players who gets to Legend as first in the world. Like, whenever there is a new season, Sixo just grinds through it. Uh, he, Sixo was recently, well, last year, he was the king of open qualifiers. He was qualifying almost for everything, just going for um, having six out scores, like 12 0 and uh, just really six scores. He was the orange of last year. Oh, yeah, orange of last year, definitely. You're like orange is the new Sixo thing. But because. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we see the board state right now. There is an air shock into that piloted shredder, and a mech warper as well. So he really makes sure that nothing comes out of that shredder that could be devastating here for Xixo, and establishes a nice board, uh, like a mech warper turning into Yeti here with the four five stats. Yeah, even though there are no mechs in uh, Sixo's hand, it still is a very powerful minion. Uh, silencing it, it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. You all, all, like you silence the mech. But there's the perfect six drop being drawn here. The fire elemental, you can use that to easily trade away the keeper of the grove. And uh, that's very nice here for Xixo establishing a bigger board. And next turn, if he has to, he can play the gra crackle with Loathip. But for now, we see Number Guy playing the Dr. GG. Dr. Boom enters the board. Oh man, Dr. Boom on turn six is definitely powerful. I wanted to say that it's not easy to come back as Druid because you don't have that many spells, but Dr. Boom is one of the best mechanisms in the game. He goes game for the Crackle. Does he hit? Does he hit for seven? That would be so lucky, and it's just... Five is still good, like you can five. kill it with the Mech Warper. Yeah, totally. Playing little flip, trade your Mech Warper in. Oh man, this is getting dangerous for Number Guy. Uh, Sixo having that Ragnaros and, and Lava Burst just waiting and his hand... It uh, comes down to the bombs now. The oh bombs yeah. have to, to clear either the Fire Elemental or the Loath. They can actually kill both of them. If, if oh, wow. Number Guy gets super lucky... <laughs> that would be a Nimsh play, them. right? That oh, definitely. <laughs> or a Mars luck. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to restart the, the game quickly again. Uh, but um, Okay, so... 
What we can see here is Namburga having uh, an Ancient of Lore. Like originally, Druid versus Shaman uh, fa is favoring Druid. Druid has the. It's kind of like an even matchup because if the Druid has the, the tools to, to kill the board, Druid will have an advantage. But if, if it doesn't, Shaman can just snowball. So we missed the bombs, but if we just uh, think about it, it might have. He might have run into the earth up with one bomb, hit the fire elemental for two. And second bomb had the uh, bomb spell damage totem. Yeah. So that might be what happened. But still with that Ragnaros, there's a big threat left in Sixo's hand. Yeah, but he won't be able to play it next turn. Next turn he will have yeah. seven mana only after the overload. But uh, having two big minions on board, they are troublesome. He gets the spell damage totem again. That might be important. Swipe Ooh. is... Is it a really he big has card? to use the force of nature here for the complete board clear. You can take out the two minions and use your hero ability to shapeshift here to heal up. Well, he can't be too sad about it. It's like one card dealing with two big threats. And uh, even though number guy is having only 10 points of health, he knows that 6 has one card in shaman deck and no, ways, no way to draw anything. Anotron is not great. This is something 6 uh, can play, but this is not advancing the board state. Still, Namburga doesn't have a way to deal with the Ragnaros. Ancient of Lore, maybe, to heal, get back to the normal state. You can also... Would you, would you go for the heal here instead of the card draw? You're on 11 HP, and as you pointed out, Sixo as a Shaman, just has the one card left in his hand. And unless that's not a Bloodlust, uh, you're pretty safe, I would say, because there's not too much one-card burst here, but... Number guy plays it safe. I would. I, I like what number guy did because uh, looking at one card, I would be afraid of a uh, Rogue Doom Hammer, because you know, like he has one card, but he's going to draw another. And what is the card that you will, are not going to draw here? I uh, like not, not going to play. Like you draw another one and just play. Yeah, Whoa, he's definitely Boom going is... for the safe play. But wow, Doctor Boom as a follow up. Well, you play Ragnaros here because it's either a damage to face or you clear the five of minion. But uh, Doctor Boom is definitely. So a what does he hit? He hits face. Another Force of Nature being drawn for a number guy here. He could go for a combination of Swipe and Force of Nature here. Is that enough to take care of Ragnaros? Well, he can if uh, he can clear Ragnaros if he attacks with a 5-5 into it. Well, you could swipe it and then play the Force of Nature. That's also enough if you then uh, run your Ancient of Lore in that taunt, run one Triant into the Annoyer Triant and two Triants into, oh, yeah, that's, into that's Ragnaros. Correct, that's also the play that I would have done. And Number Gate goes for it. He takes Ragnaros from the board. It's just too big of a threat here. Yeah, but there's the Dr. Boom just waiting for Sixer to, to get played. And the Power wow. as well. That's uh, another three points of damage. Like He doesn't even have to throw them up. Uh, Sixo also doesn't have to really fear the combo because he's just seen Force Nation. There are only two cards. Oh, he doesn't even ha have a choice. He just has to go for it here. Yeah, very great draw that that Power Mace here for Sixo. Oh, Harrison oh, Jones. Harrison Jones, but the, the Power Mace is going to buff one of the with the boom bots if destroyed. But uh, I don't think Number Guy really has a choice. Yeah, you have to do it, and you have to draw into a big game hunter. He still has the Y Grove. Oh, that's a fantastic pickup. Oh, he loses the five five the, the five four. But with another taunt, he's able to survive another turn and the druid of the claw comes down, might get taken out by Oh, the Doomhammer is lethal! Yeah, Doomhammer is enough. lethal, ladies and gentlemen. Xixo closes it out once more with his shaman deck. A victory here over number guy on the druid. And he even <laughs> hits with the bomb, the bomb, went for the BM. So Number Guy is really known uh, for his Druid skills. And he was, like, Druid was a deck that carried him to the BlizzCon um, in, in California. He was able to, to win versus Fraser. But um, the Druids is that, like, it's not that totally, but it, it gave Six a win. Right now, Number Guy can just play the Druid again. But do you play the Druid again, or do you just change the deck a bit? Unfortunately, I don't know the lineup here of Number Guy. Uh, you can always stick to the Druid. Many people tend to do that in tournaments because the Druid is always the safe option. If, if it's the deck you start with, that's usually the deck you feel most comfortable with. And uh, so I, I definitely see uh, them, uh, I see Number Guy stick to the Druid. I can definitely see that happening. But uh, let's get into the game and then we will find out. 
I think both players play Warlock, uh, so I six I also play, plays Rogue. So, as already said, Number Guy sticks to the Druid and Xixo is switching to the Rogue. We can already see white growth for Number Guy and um, Shadow Lex Ramas. It's a pretty good opening versus Rogue. Like, what uh, Druid has to do is to be very aggressive and uh, just race. This is just a race between those two decks. And for, for Sixo having this rogue, like you, you want to have free drops, you want to have some minions early to be able to and sap is also important if something gets innervated, but mostly you just want minions and deal as much damage with minions before you start casting spells. And that black knight is not really what you want to have in that matchup here. My time. Number guy goes for the wild growth. The the rogue though has the coin. Always good for the rogue to have the coin. It's a nice card for him. Oh yeah, definitely. Coin is, is very good as an enabler and um, gives you more flexibility with your mana curve. And also has a preparation now. He didn't keep the sprint. Some people also keep the sprint against Druids because you can usually expect nothing too much happening until turn four. And if you draw into that preparation, you ha have a nice hand refill and uh, then a good position to really contest the Druid. Anyways, that preparation might come in handy soon. I'm I'm just fi I'm tr trying to figure out which version of Rogue a Sixo is playing because most of the oil this is for sure oil Rogue but there is a lot of different versions. Some people play Auctioneer, some people play Sprint, some people play uh, Doctor Boom, and now with uh, Emperor Thorison, uh, it can also change the build a bit. Some people pl play Deckhand. So which version is this? Like most of the cards we see right now and we've seen the, uh, during the Mulligan are the staple cards. So Sixo can still surprise us. They are really kidding us today. We have another bug and we'll quickly rejoin. That's unbelievable. For Sixo, it's important that he also knows what kind of Druid is he facing, because you mulligan a bit differently against the Combo Druid and against the Taunt Druid. Um, for him, it's not great that this is a, a fast Druid that Number Guy is playing, because the matchup is a bit better for the Druid, I believe. Uh, and Taunt Druid is just uh, really bad versus Rogue. So Sixo knows that he has to, uh, he has to rush. Uh, one of the key cards versus most of the matchups as a rogue is a fun of um, fl blade flurry. Like if you are able to have a big blade flurry and clear the board and also deal damage to face, that's the winning move. Unfortunately, we see it in Xixto's hands. There is no blade flurry available now, and Number Guy very smart here to unveil the shade because. As you just pointed out, if the Blade Flurry comes down, it just dies without having any value. So he decides to trade with it and is playing here around the Blade Flurry of his opponent. Xixo now goes for the preparation and will play a sprint after that to just refill his hand. He draws into a second Deadly Poison into a Zap, the SI7 Agent and another preparation here. He didn't get the Flurry. He might have been aiming for that. Uh, he, if With no Flurry, he might be forced to just eviscerate the 5-3 and maybe even... Well, he has a SI7. That does not really work out, though. You probably then just eviscerate the 5-3 and then attack the 5-1. You could go attack. for preparation, though, if you want to. Preparation, eviscerate, then coin out the SI7 agent. Oh, yeah. The, uh, so you're not eating up the damage. And you also develop your board, so I like it even more. And uh, just having double Deadly Poison and Oil here, this is so powerful. He still has double the sap, so he knows that no taunts are going to stop him. Number Guy is playing Sludge Belcher. That's a very interesting card. Um, some people opt to not play it in the combo Druid, and having it makes the matchup a bit better versus Rogue, I believe, and versus Hunters. Usually it does, I agree to that point, but as you already said, with two zaps, uh, no taunt is gonna stop six, uh, Xixo here. And he just has 15 cards left in his deck and two blade flurries are in there. And with double deadly poison and ticker sharp sword oil lining up in his hand, it's a lot of potential damage coming in. And maybe next turn we might already see deadly poison into tinker sharp sword oil and the zap just to go for full face damage. I like Azur Drake, I think, this turn. Um, and and the like see what you get, and then s then you might sub Torison. That's not doing much actually. Um, I mean, for me that's a great draw. You can play it next turn with another zap and set up such a nice turn. I think next turn you might actually win uh, if you would get like a flurry. So right now, how much damage is this? This is seven um, plus one from weapon is eight plus four um, and f six. That's eighteen points of damage. If there will be like a blade flurry, 
Well, that's over. If you calculate the black flurry, uh, blade flurry in, that's uh, just eight, 18, double, 16, 17, 20, 24 damage with a blade flurry. Well, with that, 25. All right, then I think like Thor you can actually play Thorisan then. Yeah, and I think it's pretty huge here. You can go for a Thorisan, just play the zap once more. Well, then you are out of zaps. That's a bit... That's not really running Sixo's favor here, that he just has two zaps. <laughs> you can also just go for face with everything. Just go double deadly. Um, and yeah, you could do that. But he even decides to trade here. Then, yeah, Torison. So like, because just um, firing the, the bullet and going for phase is not lethal, then it's better to just stabilize the board. And with Torison, Torison is like a lightning rod. Um, number guy will have to kill it. And also the quality of Sixos can increase greatly, because right now he can just cast oil for free mana with double the lead poison. So he saved free mana on one turn. Like he can set up this one big burst turn. But he doesn't have any minions for now. Yeah, he does not have any minions. But with the Violet Teacher and the Pilot of Shredder probably coming down here, he might re-establish a board for himself. And there is no swipe for Number Guy. But there is a lot of taunts. So next turn, Number Guy. And he also have, has an Innervate. And Lothab. What Number Guy lacks is the combo. Like, he wants to have a finisher. He is defending good. But then, without a finisher, it's kind of like attrition war. So whoever, whoever runs out of cards first. There's a second slum, Sludge Whoa, Vulture. That's a lot of taunts, like double Sludge Vulture, double, double Druid of the Claw. Yeah, that will be very annoying here for Xixo to get past that. That's a very interesting build, actually, like also with, uh, with the Black Knight. Also using the Innervate right away. Shapeshift probably taking the Thalnos. Thalnos from the board. You can't leave any spell damage uh, against the rogue. And once more the spectator bug. I don't really get it, but Lothab... Yeah, that, 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 is, that is a Lothab. In it. We, we should probably restart, but like yeah. Lothab and Eviscerate. But I don't really want... Let's let's see if it works out. Let's see. I don't want to restart. The people know the cards. Lothab is a 5-5-5, five, 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 so 5 Well, you will have whenever like one of those cards is getting played, the game will bug out and you will have to restart. Unfortunately, really? that's I have I have experienced it quite a lot that it sometimes work out, works out. Really? All right. Yeah. But anyway, we are following your advice. We are rejoining. <laughs> And we will be right back with the action because the late game is on already. The deciding stages of the game. Oh, look, that the poison uh, got bugged as well. Ah, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, it's it's not a Warlock class card, so everything is fine. I'm just looking at this board and I feel like the only thing that Sixa needs is the Blade Flurry. And uh, that's one of the biggest cards in this matchup and he didn't get it. So, definitely disappointed, but this game is not over yet. And playing Lothar is establishing a very big body on board, and also uh, stopping the spells. We know that there are no spells for Number Guy for now, and one, one card is actually flipped. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. I still like Observer Mode. I, I like that we have Observer Modes. And yeah. Wow, that Whoa. Harrison Jones is crazy That's here. That's a pretty sick top deck. My thanks Whoa. to Number Guy. Such BM. Sita. Oh, yeah. Such BM here. There is a Force of Nature not doing anything this turn because of the Lothab, but there is a Lothab that's going... Whoa, this this can actually be very close to sealing the game. I think the, the game is already over here because the Druid is stable on 26 HP, has a nice board, even though even when we see a big Blade Flurry, we have the Dr. Boom follow-up, we have the first part of the combo here. So I think uh, the Druid was able to survive and will definitely have the upper hand here. Yeah, this is very interesting to see because I said before that Tom Druid is bad versus uh, Rogue and the combo Druid is good, but what Number Guy did here he kind of like pressured Sixo in the beginning, and then he started on the gap when it mattered. So he was able to use both uh, Sludge Belchers to great value and the Druid of the Claw as well. So he stopped the at uh, assault when it mattered. And also Sixo didn't get that Blade Flurry to, to have a big clear. He had to use the saps. Totally, early. that's unfortunate. Just eight cards left and no Blade Flurry being blades, uh, played so, f so far. So Sixo might be a bit angry here with Blizzard. 
Numberga can still just play Dr. Boom, and uh, I said it many times before, but whenever Dr. Boom is green, you just play it. There is rarely a situation where you don't want to play Dr. Boom. There you go, number guy takes care of that crazed alchemist and uh, Dr. GG enters the board. Number guy even puts on the pressure, he swings to the face. There's the blade flurry! Yeah, is it just in time? It's definitely too late. Uh, well, Sixo can play all the cards he has, but five, six damage to board, he can't even kill the Dr. Boom with it. Getting the boom boss. That's basically what, like 12, 16 points of damage. That's very unfortunate here. Anyway, that's the only plague Sixo has here. He's buffing up his weapon and his minion. And yeah, it does not feel... You could try to absorb some damage with the piloted shredder by attacking first and using the blade flurry, but that's very risky because if it dies, you can't take that... Lo uh, that... <laughs> you told him. <laughs> Yeah, healing up a bit, but he really is out of pressure. Well, the Zolem survived, so it's something, and it actually heals Sixo, but Sixo needs to top the sprint, and Number Guy still has a lot of cards. Number Guy just has to draw into the second part of the combo. When he draws a Savage Roar and establishes a bit, a bit of a board here with the Black Knight, this game is soon to be over. Yeah, Black Knight being like a... Uh, oh, the secret card is revealed. It was a Druid of the Claw. That's still a good card. You could even think about going for the card draw here. I would maybe draw another card with the Rav just to draw faster into the Savage Roar. Like, you don't even need Savage Roar. I think you do have time. At this point of uh, Sixo having no cards in hand and you being more or less... In the zone. Like, you've seen a lot of bursts already. Like, you've seen double Deadly Poison. You've seen uh, one Oil. You've seen Eviscerate. Even if you play the Dr. Boom, we have the big Game Hunter here. So, uh, playing it safe is also an option. He goes for the Rav now. Yeah, number guy just has to go through the motions and execute the, the game plan that he has. Just play those minions and set up lethal for next turn. You know, turn Sixers possible. only play this turn. Escape concede. This turn? Yeah. Well, you can still try maybe to see what one does more card. I, I called it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only play. Even if you draw into Dr. Boom, it runs into, into the... Uh, big Game Hunter, if you draw a sprint, it doesn't really help you. There's nothing left for You're him. You're actually right. And uh, also because if Number Guy wins, you don't will you, you, you don't need to see that Druid. And the Druid, by winning, is out of the of the match. You don't want to see more cards. You don't care about it. That's so good. But that's the equalizer. That's the 1-1 now between the players. And uh, Number Guy stick to his Druid, brought it to the table once more, and was then rewarded for that. So now it's going to be very interesting if... Sixo is going to stick to his rogue, and I um, am very... Well, we had the lineup here of of Number Guy. Number Guy still has a Warlock. It depends on what Forzen... Uh, what Forzen? <laughs> what Sixo banned. Uh, it's Warlock. It's um, Warlock? It's Warlock, and we see Warlock versus there Warlock. There we go. So now we know all the classes. So it's a 1-1. One -one. Whoever takes this match will have an advantage. Warlock versus Warlock. I'm not sure what exactly those players are playing. I haven't. Unfortunately, I haven't seen the previous match. But, whoa! Look at this. This looks like a. That's interesting. We were talking about it before. Number guy just uh, seemed to play uh, the old version of the handlock with. With the Leroy and the I Faceless Manipulator, but we already talked about it with Ignite from Portugal. I don't know if you know him. I but know Ignite. Uh, we were uh, thinking about Thorisan, that it's so dependent, that deck is so dependent on Thorisan. If you don't get it, you, well, don't really have a lot of chances left. But also, what he mentioned was Leroy Jenkins with that shade, Shadow Flame. Always a nice turn 9 combo. Yeah, I, I played that deck a lot before the nerf of Leroy, and I loved it because it was so flexible. You could, you had uh, great board gears, you had you had normally everything that Handlock had, and you also had a little burst. Uh, but here we can already see the big hunter. That big game hunter here was so crucial because otherwise he would not have a real way to contest it. Even though with two abusive sergeants he has no follow-up in his hand, so no demon to really make use of the white colors effect so it was really nice for for Sixo here to have the big game hunter in oh hand. yeah definitely well Sixo is playing an aggressive 
Demon Lock. Um, and this version is I've seen I've seen this version before. There are not that many demons. I think there is like four. There is Duraxus, Malganis, um, Void Callers, and there is I think the Doom Guard, and that's it. That that's all the demons. Um, a Void Caller still has a lot of merit. Like, if it grabs you a demon, great. If it doesn't, it's still a great card. Um, the interesting card is Bane of Doom that he's playing. And he's playing two copies of it. Wow, that I'm really surprised. Two Bane of Dooms. You're surprised by that? Yeah, mm. I've, like, I think... It recently became a very popular Bane of Doom in, in all kinds of Demon Log. And we talked about it. It's a more mid rangey version like that with the Bane of Doom. And you also said it way more aggressive than the standard control Demon Log. And now contesting that Twilight Drake with a Sylvanas. That's pretty nice. Do we have a silence here? So many cars, I can't even tell what it is. But there's no Owl. Well, I think also at this point we just have to start counting damage because with double abusive and power overwhelming, it's plus eight. So it's essentially number guy is at seven. If Sylvanas survives, that might prove lethal. Like or like if Sixo gets another power overwhelming off the top, or maybe like a dark bomb, that might be very close to lethal. There is a sludge belcher. And Sylvanas takes the Twilight Drake, it's very important. Wow. Abuse the Surgeon being really great, like just buffing that Sludge Belcher. I am sure Numberga didn't expect that. He didn't even probably have a choice. With Lothab also of, uh, extending the board, you know that there's no way that the Shadow Flame That's is getting so to do anything. so much damage here on the board, and with that power overwhelming and the Defender of Argus, I guess we are having, well, we are having lethal on the board here. I, for yeah, six, yeah so. I think that the board is more, more or less lethal. Like, he also has all the ways to, to deal with whatever is getting played. Yeah, you also have the Shadow Flame here, so the question is, if he uses the Shadow Flame now on, now he can't use it. If you go for Defender of Argus on that, then... Oh, just 8 mana. Just 8 mana. If he had 9 mana, you could think about Shadow Flame Power Overwhelming with in combination with the Abusive Sergeant, and then you would swing for 5, 11, for just uh, 13 damage to the face, but... Can he tap? Well, 7 plus 6, 13, he's too off lethal. He can't target, yeah. D does main of them deal damage to hero now? It's only 2 damage to minions, right? Yes, it's just damage to, to a character. Yeah, so uh, I think he has lethal, right? Um, with Bane of Doom. No, no because wait, you can't all play it. It's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, will mana. Need, he will need like different Evergus as well. Hmm, interesting. But you can set up lethal. Unfor well, unfortunately not, because you're just 8 mana, you need 9 mana to play Shadow Flame, Power Overwhelming and Defender of Argus. So that's not possible here, but he definitely has to go for Power Overwhelming and Shadow Flame. I guess that's... I like tapping here. I go... Yeah, then you have mana left for tapping. Then you can, well, tap first, see what you get, because always card draw first, and then... Well, he goes for the Power Overwhelming, goes for the Shadow Flame. Well, I like it. He leaves the board and he deals a lot of damage. Uh, he has to be um, worried about possible Molten Giants. But then he has the, the Bane of Doom. So, how can Number Guy survive? Can Number Guy win this right now with Leroy? Is it no damage? No, not really. There's like nine. He can play a Molten Giant, Leroy, trade into that and play Shadow Flame. So that, wow, that would not even be board clear. That would not even be a board clear. So I guess you have to go for for the dark. Bomb. Does he have a tongue giver? No, I don't see a tongue giver there. It, like he has a sludge voucher. Yeah. Can he clear the board even? Um, now he could clear the board with molten giant, shadow flame, and dark, dark bomb, bomb. But that's very expensive. That's six mana. He will be left with two, and that's it. Like not really a clear way to win that game after that. I think Sixo has it in the bag. Yeah, That's totally. Especially with the Bane of Doom. That card is so interesting. Like a lot of people laughed at the card. This was just useless for the longest time. But it got recently fixed and uh, just coming out like the Phoenix of the out of the ashes. All right. So if Sixo wins this, Sixo will have a lead, uh, two to one uh, over Number Guy. And the last deck that Sixo has is Rogue. So his Rogue will have to win versus that Handlock with Leroy, which is uh, originally Handlock is always a, uh, a bad matchup for Rogue. And the last deck is for Number Guy. 
Do we know the last deck? The, the last deck for number guy. It might either be. It's oh, a mage. It's, mage. it's, it's a, mage. a mage. So we haven't seen it in this game. And he gets the succubus. That's uh, not the best, but also not the worst. It's. Uh, I love enough. it. I love the art of this card. And World of Warcraft it was one of the best um, warlock pets that you could get. What so. do you love about it the most, Nims? The colors. <laughs> the colors, yeah, really. Not the shapes of a woman, it's the colors what Nims is uh, I like the liking. twisting nether behind in the background. Yeah. It sucks you in. <laughs> but, <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> really? You bring that sucking in? <laughs> um, Great. Num awesome. Number guy does not uh, top deck lethal here. If he plays Sludge Belcher, he might... Well, there was Pain of Doom, hmm. Well, with such Belcher, I guess he lives. No, not really, because there's Implosion as well. So you are like Defender Varius. Well, but you can't play it all, so he, he lives with the Sludge Belcher. Sludge Belcher and a Dark Bomb, yeah, that's enough. But if, if Xixo draws himself into a Dark Bomb, this game is over if he knows that he can cast the Bane of Doom on the opponent's hero. There is a Void Color, it doesn't change much. Implosion for 4. <laughs> That's how you calculate. Implosion hits for 4. That's how I do it all the time. I remember the times where you are so lucky on Zoo. Where I, you was, were... I was always lucky. So, you were calling it, it just hits for 2. Oh, well, this is 6 though. <laughs> 6 though is never lucky. <gasps> well, well, wait, you say right, that, but okay. he gets a Morganus out of the Bane of Doom and oh now the buffed in. My god. That's why Bane of Doom is so good. I need to play this deck more. I, I really love it. Yeah, but there's an answer to that. It's a big game hunter, and you can even follow that up with an NTQ bot to heal up a bit more. And Number Guy somehow stays out of lethal range. That's actually crazy. I he survives. Well, 6 is not going to die here, but Number Guy somehow claws to the... I guess nobody is going to die with two NTQ bots on the on the hand. How many cards do we have left in both players' decks? Um, we do have 13 cards. It bucked again. Somebody does not want to see... Uh, does not want us to see the game. I blame Malganis. I think he's doing some demon tricks and yeah, just, yeah, you know, yeah. trying to trick the Observer Mode here. All right, so Malganish from, from Bane of Doom. It's just... Oh, there is a Hellfire, but then it's not enough yet. Six are just trying to grind Number Guy down. There is a Shadow Flame. Oh my god, can he stay alive one more turn? Unbelievable, that Shadow Flame. Do you... He even goes for that. Yeah, because... Like, yeah, then sure. He, he cancels the drawback of Leroy, and if there's no way to deal with the Leroy, he can actually get uh, yeah. into a lethal range instead. Now he puts on some pressure, but is that enough? Well, uh, providing lethal. that that's lethal, yeah. But like, I like Number Guy's play, because if there is nothing, if there is only blanks for 6 so like passive demons you play, the Number Guy's a lethal with faces manipulated in his turn. But he played that very well. Number Guy stood so long in the game, and I didn't even see that Xixo was putting on so much pressure, and Number Guy really did the best he could do. In the end, Xixo still closes it out, and as you said, now he is ahead in that best of five series. It's 2-1. Yeah, now, now Xixo just needs to take his Rogue, and he needs to win one game with Rogue to take the match. Uh, but Number Guy still has this amazing Warlock deck, and I love it. Like I love bringing back the Leroy combo, because... It got nerfed from 4 mana to 5 mana. Like, the combo is Leroy, Power Overwhelming, and Faces Manipulator, and then you deal, what, like, 20 points of damage for 10 points of mana. And uh, Torison kind of unnerves Leroy, and even buffs it, because if, if you get, like, 1 power, power Overwhelming for free, and yes. Leroy minus 1 cost, you can deal 28 in one turn with Faces, Leroy, double, uh, double power. <laughs> and if you even have a dark, like if you if get you a Tori Sun and you hit like things like Dark Bomb, like you can just OTK one turn, one turn kill. Yeah, it's crazy how much damage you can bring out. And now we see, we, maybe that was the thing, not clipping for Number Guy last, last uh, time. We did not see the Thorison, but now Thorison is here and we have a Dark Bomb. We have Leroy Jenkins already, the first part of the combo in the hand. And let's see how this works out now for him. But he goes up against a very fast rogue here by Xixo. So coming into that range of the combo will also once more prove Number Guy's survival skills. This is so awkward because 
on one hand, number guy got a really good hand, got that Torison, which is important, and then he got Leroy. But versus Rogue, the cards you really want are Mountain Giants, Twilight Drakes. You want to put that early pressure that is hard to deal with if you're a Rogue. Oh, oh six to the middle has the best possible minion here. Six, so crazy luck here. That's a very strong minion, and it will work for Sixo because he just needs to deal as much damage here. He has Eviscerate and SI7 as a finisher if he needs to. And look at all the pressure he's putting on here. Nine damage on the board. Even that NTQ bot cannot reduce that damage a lot. Well, he's just eating up for eight. And There's another sprint that's not great. Uh, getting preparation would be, would be amazing. Just has to mill fan of knives to get something there. This guy's tough. With SI7, he's able to clear, but still the board is big. Can number guy clear this board with um, Shadow Flame this turn? Well, oh, he draws the Ancient Watcher, and with that Mortal Coil. Wow. Ancient Watcher top deck. That was a nice top I deck. I never for expected number guy. to say that. That this you top deck is, an Ancient Watcher. This game is so swingy. Like, it's going back and forth. Sixo had an advantage, but right now he's behind. He'll have to cast Sprint to refill his hand, but this will give number guy one, one turn to. Uh, develop Thorison and get the cost reduced for his key cards. Totally, that we are what uh, that is what we are about to see. There comes the sprint. We draw into some more damage. Edwin van Cleef is there as well, and the zap, double zap, and Azor Drake. Molten Giant is a bit unlucky. What uh, number guy wanted to see was part of a combo like faces, power of overwhelming to get the cost reduced because this Thorison is probably going to get killed uh, by just uh, Azor Drake eviscerate or. You could establish a board if you wanted to with the backstab and the eviscerate. You could also use that on the Thorazan and with the Violet Teacher, where you would spawn some Violet Apprentices. But I also see see him play the Azor Drag here because you're just drawing some more options and preparing for your next turns. And maybe I, if you draw a Blade Flurry, you're like already in lethal range. Yeah, like six zero needs a blade flurry again. But like in the rogue, you, there is always like yeah, the rogue could use a blade flurry right now. Like you yeah. always want blade flurry. But, but thinking about Edwin here, maybe you can play something uh, like you want to sap Thorison. You okay, want to you play, can play a lot backstab, of spells. Backstab, deadly poison, and then a pretty big Edwin van Cleef. I guess it's an eight eight then. Yeah, I like it. And then you kill Torison with the weapon But he attack. goes for the 6-6. Six, six. He does not want to run into that big game. Hunter very smart here by Xixo. He takes out that Emperor Thorison. That's even more smart by Xixo because he expects that there is no Siphon Soul in this deck. Like having so many... Uh, like combo plus the standard handlock, you, you will not have enough space uh, for Siphon Souls, possibly. So he can expect no Siphon Soul. Uh, then again, or like no silence, like he didn't see any silence, we didn't see any silence here, or yeah. our siphon. There is a mountain giant, but it's not really helping. And number guy goes for the taunted up. Loth up here, shutting down the spells, at least for one turn that preparation comes, but that Azure Drake is still a very nice turn here. Oh yeah, certainly, and um, Sixo can still clear this easily, he doesn't even have to clear the two free. Uh, he only ha has to think, like, how much damage would, do, I, do I want to deal? Well, and that's the interesting thing here, because he has to think about how many parts of the Leroy faceless combo does number guy have in his hand. So there is no lethal, right? With, uh, wait, how much damage is this? This is like 13 plus, uh, with, with sap, let's say. Into no, no, no. Oh, but he was, he was counting. Well, I one. guess Xixo calculated it and he decided it's not lethal. But you have to be careful now how much damage you take. Well, does Sixto know that there is UI plus powerful? So in the combo? now, if if Number Guy had the combo, Sixto would be dead. No, Sixto knows that there is. Yeah, if there would be a faceless instead. Uh, so combo reduce the, reduce the cost combo yeah. by person. Even with faceless, that would not be enough because right now uh, there is only. If he had a faceless before or the power overwhelming, then he could play the power overwhelming for free. He had exact nine mana, would deal 20 damage this turn. But unfortunately for Number Guy, he does not have that in his hand. And once again, it's about our little survivalist, I would like to call him. Number Guy really doing a lot of survival here. And he did a great job last game, but I don't see him. I think he has to tap and then he'll have 7 mana, Mo so Mountain Giant will be for 5. Maybe Molten draw into, sh in the, into a second Shadow Flame? Yeah, he needs a Shadow Flame or he needs Sun Fury, and, uh, or if he taps, he needs 5 mana, 
something for two maybe maybe an ancient watcher yeah but his only choice i agree to that is to tap here you definitely have to tap so here if he plays because he has defender vargas defender vargas is like not not sun fury yeah but do you want to taunt your big game hunter up together with the molten giant i would I would not think that that's enough, and with the double zap that we have here and the preparation, that's uh, lethal here for Xixo, and that and means he will close the series out shortly. And he even gets the Blade Flurry. Well, this is lethal for sure, so Sixo is going to take the series 3-2-1 versus Number Wow, guy. does he go for the BM? Does he hit his face with that? <laughs> he certainly can, and he does that. Oh my god! It's like, whoops. So much BM. Numberga knows, he's just looking at the screen right now. Yeah, he's, he's sitting there. But Numberga is not out of this tournament. Sixo goes through, he goes out of his group stage with Numberga, Forsen and Alash. And Numberga will have to wait for Forsen or Alash and a fight versus them to actually advance um, to the next stage of the tournament. Totally, and with some style, I would like to say, uh, Sixo goes up here and wins his group. He wins over Alish 3-0, wins over Number Guy 3-1, that's what we just saw. And after a short break, we will be right back with the next game, and it's gonna be Alish against against Forza. Forza. Yes, against Forza. So that is back. Don't go anywhere. Alright. Take a little